Namaste, welcome back to our channel Ayurveda 360. In this video, we are going to discuss a part of Vedanga, that is Chandas. The introduction related to the Chandas, the background what you require for understanding each and every Chandas is available in another video. The link is in the description. You can watch that. In this video, we are going to analyze an important Chandas which is the maximum utilized Chandas in Ayurveda, that is Anustup Chandas. You might have seen many of the Acharya, like the ones who are worshipping the God and all. They are going to chant many of the mantra. And they have a particular tone and you can say laya for each and every shloka what they are reciting. Do they follow any particular rule? Yes, they follow. Among so many chandas available, in this video we are going to analyze the Anustup chandas. As I have already mentioned, the basics are available in another video. Kindly watch that and understand this in a better manner. What are the rules of this Chandas he is mentioned in this Shloka. That is Shloke Shastam Guru Gneyam Sarvatra Lagu Panchamam Dvi Chatushpada Yorasvam Saptamam Dirgam Anyayam. This is just the usual reading what we do. How to apply this Chandas and how to sing it in a you can say rhythmic way that we are going to see in this video. So before understanding this Lakshana there are few few words like Guru Lagu we will understand what is that exact Guru and Lagu, then we will come back to the Shloka. Basically, Rishwa Akshara refers to the Lagu Akshara. That is, among this Vara, you have a, e, u, ri and r. That is, some people pronounce it as ru and in North India it is pronounced as ri. So, these, these are considered to be Rishwa Akshara. Whereas, the Guru Akshara are the Dirga Akshara, that is nothing but the a, e, u, these are the ones A, I and O, O. And not only those, you also should consider Anuswara Yukta Akshara, Varna, to be Dirga in nature. This is the rule of Chandas, you have to follow that. For example, Ansaha. So, A uh, is having the Anuswara, that is why it is considered to be a, that is Dirga Akshara or Guru Akshara. And Visarga Sahita Akshara, even though it could be Lagu Akshara, if it is having the Visarga, like Ansaha, Dakshaha. There, Ksha should be taken as a Guru Akshara. That is because Visarga Sahita Lagu Akshara is also considered as Guru. Similarly, there is another rule like if there is any Sanyukta Akshara. Sanyukta Akshara refers to where the Varna is made up of two or three letters. For example, in the example of Daksha, the Ksha is made up of three letters. Similarly, Patni, there you are having the Tri, Ta and Na along with E Swara makes it Tni. Now, the letter preceding the Sanyukta Akshara, the letter preceding the Sanyukta Akshara is said to be Dirga in nature. This is different, not the uh, Sanyukta Akshara itself is Dirga. No, not like that. If Sanyukta Akshara is having the Dirga Akshara, then of course it is possible. But if it is uh, Sanyukta Akshara and there is a letter prior to that, if it is Vrasva in nature, it is also considered to be Guru in nature. For example, in this case, the and P. Both are considered to be Guru in nature. So, these are the rules of how to identify a Guru Akshara. Raswa is easy and Guru Akshara, there are certain additional rules that you have to remember. And after that, it will be very easy for you to remember or you can say understand this concept. So, the Shloka of Anustup Chandas which explains the Lakshana says, Shloke Shastam Guru Gneyam Sarvatra lagu panchamam dvichatushpada yorasvam saptamandirgamanyayo. This is one way of explaining this shloka, like the pronunciation. The another way, what we can follow is Shloke shastam guru gneyam sarvatra lagu panchamam dvichatushpada yorasvam saptamandirgamanyayo. So, this is another way of reciting this shloka. If you happen to observe my pronunciation, after 8 letters, I was giving gap. Like after Guru Gneyam, I gave a gap. Then again, Panchamam, I gave a gap. Dvi Chatushpada Yorasvam, I gave a gap. And then the ending. So, basically, this shloka is made up of 4 different Pada. So, we call them as Pada. One fourth part of each 
like shloka is considered as one pada if you observe the number of letters here each line consists of 16 letters so total it comes to about 32 letters if you count shlo k sh stham gu ru gne yam there are eight letters there sarvatra is 3 lagu is 2 panchamam in panchamam the last ma which is alanta should not be counted this is the rule of chandas alanta shab letter varna will not be counted as the number so that's why sarvatra lagu panchamam is also eight in number dvi chatushpada yo rasvam so until rasvam that is also eight in number saptamam dirgam anye eight letters so each pada is said to have eight letters and in that way the entire shloka is said to have 32 letters that is the first rule how to identify a anushtup chandas it should have 32 letters as a whole and it should have four pada with eight letters each so that is the easiest way of identification of anushtup chandas and if you happen to see the lakshana in detail you will be amazed to, to see how our acharya used to make this shloka it is not the shloka what they got in an instance it is the yukti what they put before pinning down the letters and the words and that made it so beautiful because if you see the reference lakshana shloke in a shloka shashtam guru gneyam shashtam sixth letter shashtam refers to sixth letter sixth letter is said to be guru in nature in each and every shloka sixth letter is said to be guru that is in each and every pada sarvatra lagu panchamam in each of the pada fifth letter is said to be lagu panchamam lagu dvi chatush pada yo saptamam rasvam in the second and fourth pada you have that is uh, seventh letter that is rasva in nature similarly in dirgam anyayo anyayo here refers to other than second and fourth it should be first and third so in first and third the pada the seventh letter the same saptamam should be taken with both the uh, verses i mean both the parts there saptamam seventh letter is dirga so these are the rules of anushtup chandas if you happen to see and like appreciate this you will be in a better way to understand and you can say you will be in a uh, joyous mood when you are learning the shloka this because these are not simple letters or words these are written with so much dedication and rules they have followed anushtup chandas and certain other note what you have to make is uh, what you have to see is avagraha whenever there is an avagraha in a shloka we don't pronounce that and neither it is counted in the number of letters that is more important and as i already mentioned alanta varna will not be counted so after seeing the rules of this anushtup chandas if you happen to see the lakshana of this shloka that itself follows the rules that means this shloka itself is written in anushtup chandas so this also follows the rules whatever we have seen here but for our uh, like you can say convenience i'll take examples from ashtanga hridayam and charaka samhita so that you already know the shloka it will be easy for you to grasp the information so the rules what is mentioned in the shloka lakshana that can be represented in a syllable form in this way that is the uh, guru akshara or guru letters are written in the small form of s yes and a single line represents the lagu akshara so in that way it is represented whenever you want to uh, write the shloka in the form of syllable so this is just for your information so the fifth letter is considered to be lagu everywhere in all the four pada sixth letter is guru in all the four pada and seventh letter in the Uh, first and third pada it is the guru and the second and fourth pada it is the lagu so those rules are depicted in this uh, like reference so if you happen to see this shloka this is from ashtanga hridayam sutra sthana first chapter i think most of you are aware of this that is the ashtanga of ayurveda kaya bala grahu urdvanga shalya danstra jara vrishan ashtavangani tasyahu chikitsa yeshu sanshrita so if you see the number of letters the first line consists of kaya bala grahurdwanga so till there it is eight letters shalya danstra jara vrishan again eight letters astavangani tasyahu that is again eight letters and lastly chikitsa yeshu sanshrita again eight letters there is no uh, in the first line there is a alanta letter there na that will not be counted that is how it becomes total 32 letters so each pada eight letters can be divided there easily and that is how we identify it as anushtup chandas and it is the symmetrical pada four pada or all all having the eight letters each so there is no difference there and we apply the rule there the fifth letter if you observe 
kaya bala gra gra is the fifth letter that's why it should be lagu same way we have shalya damstra j j is the fifth letter in the second pada that is why it is lagu in the third pada if you see the ni ni is the fifth letter that is lagu and the fourth pada shu that is lagu so it follows the uh, rule of the lagu akshara of fifth letter if you see the sixth letter there each and every pada you have o in the first pada but the succeeding that is word letter is also sanyukta akshara in itself o is considered to be dirgha year and then in the second pada if you see ra that is guru in the third pada sixth letter that is the but it is guru because sya is the letter following that so sanyukta akshara prior to that that is why it is a guru in nature then in the fourth pada you have sam that is vis anuswara yukta varna that's why it is considered to be guru in nature so it follows the guru letter of sixth i mean guru varnat of sixth letter as well if you see the second and fourth pada seventh letter you see vru and the that is sh- shri both are guru in nature i mean both are lagu in nature if you observe the first and third pada that is seventh letter there you are going to get the guru that is nothing but the uh, letters rudva that is again dirga in nature and if you see the third pada there you have sya that is also dirga in nature so that follows the dvi chatushpada rasvam saptamam dirgam anyayu that rule is also followed so in that way this shloka is anustup chandas and it follows all the rules what is mentioned in the anustup chanda lakshana i hope you got the point how to identify the anustup chandas and how these rules are applied in the each and every pada and each and every shloka of anustup chandas so this shloka can be recited as in the uh, laya yukta form that is kaya bala grahurdvanga shalyadam srajara vrushan astavangani tasyahu chikitsayeshu sanshrita so if you observe we don't pronounce the anuswara or visarga we make it dirga that is the rule when you are reciting in chandas form you should not recite the visarga or anuswara it should be made into dirga form that is the rule so in the another way it can also be uh, recited as kaya bala graha urdvanga shalya dansra jara vrishan astavangani tasyahu chikitsa yeshu sanshrita so this is another way of reciting the same shloka so this shloka if performed or if if it is recited by uh, expert singer like those who are aware of these musical notes and all that will be better but this is just for educational purpose that's why i am reciting by myself if there are any mistakes kindly pardon me so the next shloka what i am taking here as an example is from astangardhi itself this is from the dosha vedi adhyaya first shloka that is vatastana so apply the rules of anustup chanda 16 letters in each line yes they are there is it having four pada yes each are having eight eight letters and if you observe the fifth letters there everything is lagu sixth letter everything is guru and second and fourth pada that is the seventh letter it is considered to be the lagu and first and third pada seventh letter is it is considered to be guru so you can check by yourself that it follows the anustup chandas so let us recite this in with laya that is pakwa shaya kati sakti shrotra asti sparsha nindriyam sthanam vatasya tatrapi pakwadanam visheshata so this one way of reciting another way of reciting this is pakwa shaya kati sakti shrotra asti sparsha nindriyam sthanam vatasya tatrapi pakwadanam visheshata so in this way if you are able to recite this shloka you will be able to memorize it in a easier manner and also effectively so we'll take another example last example this is from charaka samhita the sutra sthana first adhyaya so shloka is in relation to samanya siddhanta again apply the rule of anustup chandas everything matches with the rules what i mentioned so let us recite directly sarvada sarva bhavanam samanyam vruddhi karanam rasa hetur visheshascha pravrittiru vayasyatu this is the shloka in one of the form in the another form you can also recite this as sarvada sarva bhavanam samanyam vruddhi karanam vrasa hetur visheshascha pravrittiru vayasyatu so in this way it can be recited and 
for listening also it is very melodious and also you can learn it easily this is how each, each and every shloka used to be learned by the ancient authors that is why they could remember so many shloka in today's time we are trying to recite the shloka or you can say memorize the shloka by force and especially from examination point of view that is why it becomes difficult for us to remember each and every shloka but if you have the habit of learning this shloka in this form then definitely these are not going to be difficult and also if you learn it with joy happiness definitely it will stay in your memory for a longer time as mentioned in the previous slides this shloka that is anustup chand shloka are the ones which are maximum available in the samhita that is why even if you are not aware of other other like chandas this should be known by each and every ayurveda scholar so in that way you can make the maximum benefit you can take the maximum benefit of another vedanga that is chandas in the coming videos we'll also be analyzing the other chandas what we can find in ayurveda samhita like for example shalini malini or you can say the shardula vikriditam and many more they are yet to come so wait for those videos and kindly support by watching those videos as well and each and every video will have the reference from ayurveda samhita without that we will not be presenting because whatever video we are presenting we should be helpful for a ayurveda scholar so there are few chapters where exclusively one chandas is used there are few chapters where multiple chandas are used at the end of the playlist like once we complete the playlist of chandas definitely you should be in a position to identify which chandas you are like actually reciting like shloka which uh, chandas is applied in a shloka and you will be able to analyze and remember by yourself so in that way this playlist should be beneficial especially for all the students who are finding it difficult to learn the shloka if i ask you to re- recite any uh, poem or any song from any movie definitely you can recite within uh, minimum period but the same thing doesn't happen with the shloka reason is simple the laya the you can say the yati the gap where you are reciting the shloka all those are necessary for easy remembering and for long term memory and that can be obtained by the usage of such chand so if you like the content like share and subscribe to our channel kindly watch the other playlists of our channel where numerous uh, classical information is mentioned along with certain general information for both students and public kindly support us by subscribing and pressing the bell not- bell notification so that whenever we upload a video you get the notification until next time myself dr nandish j thank you